Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of the numbers that we're seeing here in Arizona. And uh, it's pretty easy to follow. It's not too wild. No real wild swings up and down. But boy, there's some crazy stuff going on out there. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that real estate does not move quickly. Prices don't shoot up fast. They don't come down quick. And I'm going to show you why. And we're going to talk about where we're at today and what it means for today. Because there's all these wild predictions out there. And as you know, I try not to predict out a year. But it's pretty easy right now to predict at least three to six months out. And I'll show you why. And I'll show you the rationale behind that. It's simply a supply and demand argument. Just like any other asset that's out there. If there aren't very many assets, the price is going to go up. Now, as inflation is starting to rage, there's an old saying that says, nothing cures high prices better than high prices. Um, that can be said for a lot of things, but it's a little harder in real estate in that not only are the purchase prices going up, but the price to rent is going up and you're kind of stuck. So there has to be a few things to change in order for that to improve. But right now, this morning, in our market, we are starting uh, a Monday with only 4,885 homes on the market. And that's going to drop by another 300 tomorrow and put us down to 4,500. By comparison, um, our long-term average <clears throat> and what we would call a balanced market is about 27,000 homes on the market. So we're just a tad short. The city of Youngtown, which is up by Sun City, Arizona, in the northwest part of the city, has zero listings. They have 27, a population of about 2,700 people, nothing for sale up there. First time ever. Over the past seven days, we have had, and I'm going to show you on my little handy dandy chart here, I'm going to go into a little more detail, 3,764 homes come on the market, and 3,906 of those went under contract. Now, when we talk about supply and demand, this is important to understand if you're waiting for prices to drop. Prices cannot drop if demand is outstripping supply, which you're seeing here. The blue line there is supply coming down, and the red line is number of contracts. I included some of the other numbers in here because I want to show you that here's our pending listings. They've dropped just a little bit over the past seven days. Here's our under contract accepting backups. That's been running lower than pending listings, listings. But here's one that people really don't pay a lot of attention to, and that's contingency. I'll buy your house contingent upon the sale of my house. Well, sales are so brisk that sellers are just not even going to consider these. So see how low that number is? That's one of the first numbers that's going to start sliding up if inventory increases. Now, inventory, as long as we've got 3,900 homes going on the market and 3,900 homes getting gobbled up. Do you expect prices to come down? I don't. They're getting sold as fast as they put on. In fact, right now, 46% of our homes on our market are going above list price. Compare that to 2007, that number was 8%. And that 46% number last month went up. So it's not going in the opposite direction. Somebody made a comment on my channel yesterday, wait till the February and March numbers come out. It's February 14th, and 46% of our homes are going above list price. So what do you expect to radically change in the next two weeks that's going to pull pricing down? A lot of discussion about Zillow. Zillow's getting out because they're seeing numbers that we don't see, so they know that things are going to crash, and they've got all this debt, and they're selling all their homes to investors. There's three reasons why Zillow is now dumping their homes to investors. One, they paid too much. Their Zestimate made them pay too much for the homes. They decided to exit their home buying business and move on to other things. They're coming out with a new app. supposed to just light the world on fire. Number two, after they decided to exit their business, they laid off 25% of their staff. That means they can't even process these sales individually. They can't put them on the market. They don't have the staff. Number three, they can't find labor and materials, which is one of the reasons they got out of the home buying and selling business in the first place. They didn't anticipate anticipate as many people jumping in and accepting their offer as they did and they didn't do a very good job of planning to say can I get the paint can I get the labor can I get the materials so now they're out so their only recourse now to get rid of the roughly 8,000 homes they have left is to sell them in bulk to investors that already have the labor and the materials to fix them up and get them off uh, get them on the market put them up for sale or 
turn them into rentals. So that's a whole nother discussion. That's the Zillow story. Now, supply and demand is not just for real estate. And you don't have to be a real estate agent to know why home prices are going up. There's nothing magical about the numbers we see. In fact, most realtors don't like this market. I don't like it. I wish when I went and showed a home that there were only maybe one other person looking at that home instead of the 15 to 30 that I see every time I go out. I wish I could drive and show a client a home, sit down and have a cup of coffee, discuss our pricing strategy, turn the offer in maybe the next day, and then have it reviewed and get a phone call that it was accepted instead of going, looking at it, hurrying up, getting back to the office, writing an offer, calling the agent, how many offers you got? Well, we already have four and they're all over the list price. Okay, call the client. It's hectic. And you're writing about five offers per client before you finally get an offer accepted. So those other offers and all those miles you're driving, you're not getting paid. So do you think real estate agents like this and they enjoy driving the price of real estate up? No, we hate it. And we can't drive the price of real estate up. Supply and demand does that. Tobias says, Rick, is there a price range that is not increasing as fast as houses in the 500000 range? Are the million-dollar homes more realistically fairly priced than those? No. That's actually the highest price acceleration we're seeing right now, Tobias, is above $1 million. Why? Simple. There aren't enough of them. The supply of homes in Paradise Valley and Fountain Hills is drastically low. And I'll show you on the Cromford Index in just a moment here. So great question. But let's look outside of real estate for a moment. Let's look at cars. Okay. The car dealerships are selling cars above the manufactured selling price, the MSP. And the, and the uh, suppliers like Ford are having a fit. They're telling them, you're not supposed to do that. 82% are being sold over MSRP. Why? There aren't enough cars. Is it greed? No, there are not enough cars for sale. Why? Because there aren't enough chips. We can't get the chips. We can't make the new cars. Used cars prices are going crazy. Oil prices are going to hit 100. Why? Because there's not enough oil. Why is there not enough oil? Well, we shut down the Keystone Pipeline. We shut down drilling. We don't have enough oil to produce in the United States. We don't have enough oil. The price is going up. In real estate, we don't have enough homes for sale. Therefore, the prices are going up. When can we expect them to go down? When that gap changes. How fast will we see that? That's what we're going to take a look at right now. Cromford Report did a great analysis that came across yesterday that I really want to share with you. And um, before I share that real quick, I want to talk about what the index is. The index is a measurement of supply and demand. So it's a proprietary number. So he talks about an index of 100 being a balanced market for both buyers and sellers. Predominantly in Arizona, the majority of the time, it's been an advantage for sellers. Right now, it's an extreme advantage for sellers. So a Crawford market index is normally of 100. We're rocking in the 400 and 500 range right now. So we're going to historically go back a little bit here and look at that and see what's changing and how fast things change. So what we are seeing is... The average price for closed sales across all areas and types is slow moving and a non-volatile measure thanks to its large sample size. It takes a lot of change in the market to drive this number any particular direction and the trends are long lasting. He's talking about this. See, there aren't wild spikes up and down. There's a crash of 2008 we're going to talk about, but look how slowly that moves in one general direction. And now it has gone up to its highest level ever. If you draw a line in real estate right here on the trend and you go a, an appreciation rate of 4% and you go over, we probably should be landing right about here. But because of inflation, because of everything else and shortage of supply, we're above that normal trend line. And again, you don't have to be a Harvard economist to know that. During the bubble years, the maximum value attained was 339. And this was for the month of August 2007. What is important to realize is that the bubble started to deflate in April 2005. That's the day the CMI changed direction. What's the CMI? It's this, the Cromford Market Index that I just spoke about. Now, we're going to look at this and say, well, okay, here's August 2005. There's June, July, August. It started going straight down. Well, now you look over here and you go, well, wait. It was going straight down here in... Uh, Let's go down here. This is uh, May, June, July. That is true. But it's going down from a level of 500, where this was going down from a level of 300, and it started approaching a balanced market of 150. And it started approaching it quickly. 
And uh, Michael Orr at Comfort was saying, guys, the market's going to change. But look how long it took for it to change. You go back and he says, it says, um, remember the severe price drops did not really take off until 2008, three years later, after the first signs of a problem. This is how the housing market works in extremes. It still changes direction very, very slowly, like a giant oil tanker at sea. So the numbers were there in 2005, showing that things were about to slow, and the price decreases didn't hit until down here in 2008. So what are we seeing now today in February? We're going up like a rocket ship. So are the February numbers going to be lower than January? Not a chance. Are March numbers going to be lower? Nope. Based on the projections and looking at this, even if interest rates go up, based on the way demand and supply is going right now, are April numbers going to be lower? I doubt it. I think we're going to see real estate prices be up at least 2.5% in February and at least 2.5% in March. And interest rates right now are running at 4%. You and me are backing off by about 15% on home purchases, but it's being made up by investors increasing their purchases by 26%. Second home buyers increasing their purchases by 25%. The buyers are still there. Again, we're putting 3,900 homes on the market and 3,900 homes are being gobbled up every seven days. So if you're a crasher and you're saying this is all going to change, that number has to change. That number has to change dramatically. Tobias says, are banks being more lax on debt to income ratio comps down payment or are things are there just enough rich people out there? Eventually things become unsellable, don't they? Eventually they do, but as you can tell by these charts, it takes time. No, they're not loosening their credit standards. The one thing I'm seeing right now is some chatter about a 40-year mortgage. Don't do that. Don't touch it because the first 10 years you're paying interest only. So 10 years from now, if you don't have any appreciation, you're going to be upside down. So don't touch that 40-year mortgage just so you can get a lower payment. So no, we're not seeing it. Where are people getting the money? A lot of money out there, Tobias. I'm staggered at the amount of money that people come to the table with. Several of my coworkers, according to Bryce, said they had a down payment assistance with their loans and are locked in for five or 10 years with crazy high mortgages. Is there a high default on these properties? They can't afford to buy home clearly? Down payment assistance? There were a lot of down payment assistance programs that kind of locked people in. Uh, they came in at a higher rate, but the bottom line is their mortgage on both the grant and their note is a fixed payment, and the house appreciation is still going up, so I don't think they're in danger of, of uh, losing their homes. We're looking at the foreclosure rates now, and they're up a little bit, but they aren't anywhere near normal. We expected foreclosure rates to come up, but they aren't, uh, they aren't hitting the books. In fact, if I were to look at foreclosures right now, I think the uh, pre-foreclosure number is somewhere in the low 40s. I think it's 43 homes. Um, I can probably look it up here for you real quick. Let's take a let's take a look at that while we're on the uh, on the subject. Go to Tableau charts here and go down to come on to cooperate with me. You're live. Uh, let's see foreclosures. There we are, right there. Notice the trustee sales. How many are there? Let me get rid of my head here. Down here in the bottom, there are 83, not 43. So foreclosures are not jumping up. So nothing to worry about there. You're not going to get a deal on that. What's going to change inventory? High interest rates? Could. Economic breakdown? Major recession? Well, we had one in 2008, uh, but we saw the numbers changing way back in 2005 and 2006 in particular. 2006, we had a year and a half supply of inventory on the market. Today, we have a little over two weeks. So we're not anywhere near that number. That has to change. What can change that number? The only thing that can change that number is almost knocking on doors of a complete economic collapse. Is there anything out there that can cause that? There's always something out there that can cause that. So right now, things are looking pretty good in Arizona. Um, our our tourism is way up. Uh, gosh, next year we have the Super Bowl. Everything's rocking and rolling. Now we've got winds of war going on in Ukraine that could change everything dramatically. We have the Fed talking about having an emergency meeting this week. 
talk about when they might want to raise rates, but that anticipation's already been built into the market. Usually when by the time the Fed raises rates, rates have already gone up. So we're at 4.02 right now this morning on a national average. Your lender may be different, so make sure you check with them. So there are things out there that could really muddy the waters, but real estate turns slowly. Again, Zillow did not get out because they anticipated things to go to hell in a handbasket. They got out because they didn't have the material and the labor to be able to fix and remodel their homes. For you and I, we're still in the trenches. Real estate prices are going up. I don't see any relief coming in the next couple of months. But when I do, you'll see it here first on this channel as we look at the numbers together. Have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Thank you.